The next section of a research article we're going to discuss is the materials and methods section. So this is really important if you need to uh, reproduce results of a paper or if you just want to use the protocols uh, for something that you're doing in lab. Uh, it's also uh, a critical uh, place to find information if you're trying to determine the validity of the results in a research article. And so materials methods section uh, location may vary depending on the paper. Uh, or rather the journal that the paper is in. So for instance, in our example for Thomas et al, the materials and methods section is right after the introduction. So this is one of the most common places to find the materials and methods section. Okay. Uh, but in other papers, depending, and again, this depends on the journal and how they format it, uh, the materials and methods section doesn't come after the introduction. So for instance, in this paper, uh, there's the abstract, here's the introduction, and then the results comes right after the introduction. Materials and methods in this paper is found all the way at the end, after the discussion, at the end of the paper. And it is also in a different font, uh, sort of highlights uh, where it is. And sometimes in some papers, the materials methods section is not found in the main text at all. So in this paper that we've been looking at by Barry et al. Oops, okay. Uh, by Barry et al. Here's the introduction, the abstract, the intro. And uh, the intro runs right into the results in the discussion. But by the time we get to the end of the paper, we never find the materials and methods section. So often in papers like this, you'll find at the end of this additional information, supplementary information uh, can be found. And often for these, if you can't find the materials and methods section, it will be in the supplementary information. So here's the supplementary information for Barry et al. And if we scroll down, we'll find supplementary methods. And so this is where the methods, uh, the materials and methods section is uh, for this paper. So it's not in the main text at all. Okay. So the materials and methods section is often organized by type of experiment. So let's go back to Thomas. All right. So at the top, there's often uh, where reagents and other proteins can be uh, bought if they're purchased. Um, and then description of instrumentation, instrumentation sometimes. And then depending on uh, the different types of reactions they use or the different types of experiments that you present in the paper, uh, there should be detailed protocols uh, for how these were done. So for the NO superoxide reaction in this paper, there's a section. Uh, oxidation assay is another section. Western blot and dot blot analysis. Uh, this can also be seen in, for instance, in this paper uh, where enrichment growth and whole cell biotransformations of bacteria, identification and sequence analysis of bacteria, section on analytical methods, gene library construction and screening, genome sequencing, purification of lyase, enzyme assays. Okay. So what the materials and methods section should do above all is explain the protocols in sufficient detail that you as a uh, with, with appropriate expertise, uh, could repeat the experiment. So this is very similar to the experimental section that you would have in a lab notebook, uh, or uh, for your for your uh, laboratories, what you would have for your experimental section, right? And so these should, for instance, uh, in this uh, paper, uh, purification of NNG lyase. We'll, we'll 
uh, say for example. So this should say exactly what reagents were used. So for instance, E. coli PDG708. So this is an E. coli strain. So it details exactly which strain was used. It was grown in LB medium. So that's a very specific uh, composition of growth medium and supplemented with an antibiotic. And then you'll notice that afterwards it says the exact concentration of the antibiotic, the temperature that these were grown at until the optical density of 600 nanometers reached 0.2. So those are very specific instructions that you can follow uh, if, you're, if the lab you work in is uh, suitable to do these types of experiments, which ours is uh, for making, uh, ours is definitely equipped to do uh, recombinant expression. Uh, which this is the uh, type of experiment that's been done here. And if you have the uh, appropriate background to do the experiments. So uh, L arabinose 0.2%, it continues, it uses different buffers, exactly uh, how to lyse cells and so on and so forth. So this is a very detailed protocol that you can follow along uh, in your own lab and presumably get the same results. Um, as the authors did. Okay. Finally, uh, where or how cells, reagents, or proteins are obtained. And so this is often found at the top of the materials and methods section. So for instance, here, uh, the authors have said uh, chemicals. So NNG was from ACOS uh, Consulting and Solutions. Okay, so this says exactly where they got one of the reagents, uh, they didn't make it if they didn't make it themselves. So they purchased this uh, from a certain company. And so by providing this information, you can ensure that, that you're trying to reproduce these results, that you have the exact uh, chemicals from the exact companies, uh, and you can uh, faithfully reproduce the results, presumably, as long as you have these reagents. Okay. Uh, for instance, Thomas et al. Uh, this may also include, for instance, things like proteins. Uh, so BSA, ribonuclease A, these are all different proteins that uh, the authors didn't make uh, in their own laboratory, but they purchased uh, from Sigma Altridge. Um, this may also include uh, information about if a if protein was given or reagents were given as a gift, uh, it may, from another laboratory, it may be uh, said in this uh, section of the materials and methods as well. Okay.